like tied 30th if you first open. Must have been happy with that, I'm guessing. Well, those dreams were shattered when I'd shot 30 on the front nine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've got one hand on the claret jug. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was already thinking where I was going to take this picture. You know, Planned his Instagram. Instagram <laughs> caption, all this stuff. Who am I going to thank in my speech? <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back to the Rick Shields Golf Show podcast, everybody. I'm your host, Rick Shields. I'm here with producer Guy, or co-host Guy, shall I say. Thank you. Episode 98. Yes. Fast approaching episode 100. It's getting scarily close. And we actually went to the venue the other day of the, the live podcast that's coming in a couple of weeks. Getting serious. Were you more confident or more nervous after that? More nervous. <laughs> 450 people are going to be sat there watching us talk nonsense for an hour and a half, two hours. More nervous, 100%. Well... We've got two people on the podcast today who are not nervous in front of big crowds because many times they have played golf in front of big crowds. Mm -hmm. And well, comfortably, I can say this, we've got more European tour table, more European tour wins on this table than we ever have before. Collectively, the four of us... Between the four of us, there's four European tour wins. <laughs> on each. Easy numbers, you know. Easy numbers. Quick math. We've got Sam Horsfield. Thanks yes. for coming on. Thank you for having me. And we've got Hayden Porteous. Yes. Both European tour players, both kind of in Manchester today. We filmed a video with Sam, and you kind of featured a little bit on the back nine as well, Hayden, which we'll come on to. But we just want to chat. Two young lads living the dream out on the European tour. Is that the case? Is it living the dream? Sam? Yeah, it is living the dream. Um, you know, we get to travel the world for 25 weeks of the year. Um and play the game that we'd love to play. Um, you know, it can test our patience at sometimes, but, um, you know, we got to be pretty fortunate um, to be able to do what we get to able to do. And, you know, these last 18 months of the in the world, it's been, you know, been pretty crazy. And, um, you know, for us to be able to be able to continue to play golf during the majority of that is, you know, it's, we've been pretty lucky. Yeah, it is amazing. It's funny here, Sam, because I want to just kind of set the scene for a lot of people listening. Um, you're from Manchester. Yes, yes. <laughs> the accent's changed. I know. Yeah, the accent <laughs> I in sound like it, right? You do. Can you do a mank? No, no, I cannot. I cannot. <laughs> can you do American, Rick? <laughs> yeah, sure can. That's not bad. It's not, not bad. Not, 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 bad. A, not a problem. I think it's because I've been spending all day with Sammy here. Yeah, yeah. That's because of like me. Texas, I think. I do, I do. I go very Southern mm. when, I, when I go American. Um, so, Sam, you were uh, obviously... But is it, I mean, even got your Wikipedia here in front of you. Not that I need it open. <laughs> but you were born in Manchester. Yep, I was born in uh, Manchester style area. Um, lived here until I was five, and then um, moved over to the states. Then and um, grew up there. Started, learned to play golf there. Um, went to the University of Florida. Played my college golf there, and now I'm back here on the European tour. Nice. And how long are you back in the UK for this kind of spell? Um. So I've done. <laughs> Um, let's see, we got next week, Dunhill is next week, and then I have like a month off, um, but I'm currently on week six, and uh, so six out of seven weeks for me. Wow, away from home. Away from home, yep, six out of seven. That must be hard. Yeah, I think Hayes on, Hayes on a few more than me, yeah, but yeah. It's, uh, you know, as, as Sam said, it's it, it's been a pretty tough 18 months uh, with COVID. Um, yeah, I haven't been home since mid-March. Wow. Uh, so it's been pretty difficult. Obviously, going back to South Africa um, puts me at high risk of COVID or bringing back the South African strain. So I've decided it's probably best for me to stay in Europe and, uh, you know, just sort of go through life, you know, go through the tour, you know, week by week. And yeah. um, obviously not ideal, but, um, you know, as Sam says, you know, it's, it's a game that we love and, yeah. and you know, to, to be able to play the game that we love, we, we need to travel. And unfortunately, during this time, it, it, it has been difficult. But, you know, we still, as as we as we like to say, that you know, it's it's the game that we love. So, Do not ask me to try and do a South African accent. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's one I really struggle <laughs> with. Yeah, it's quite lazy, I think. It's... it's Normally, if I, if I hear an accent, I can kind of, listen, I'm not great, but I can kind of, <laughs> can South you? African, I can't I don't even know where to start <laughs> with, yeah, with I think the accent. Normally, normally guys go to, or go for the go-to, which is how's it? How's it? Yeah. Like a cricket Hazard. term. Yeah. But how's exactly. that? Yeah, exactly. But how's it? Exactly. So we would normally greet each other with that. Um, what else do I do, so? You say um, brew? Brew. Is brew like yeah. for bro? Yeah. yeah, pretty much. So I'll, I'll, I'll 
change depending on my mood. It's probably like bro or bro or boy. Yeah, boy. He loves boy. <laughs> he loves that one. <laughs> <laughs> is there is there any like mad like words that you I wouldn't even understand if and you might say it all the time. Um maybe schmuck, which means like I like. Oh. Yeah. In fact, I, I thought that was gonna be a negative. No. Schmark is like yeah, schmark for that. Schmark. Yeah. S M A R K. I would say that, I, I wouldn't say that's slang. I would say that's more Afrikaans. But we have quite a I would say we intertwine our languages a little bit in terms of our slang. I get you. Um so brew could obviously also be, you know, from an Afrikaans Afrikaans side. That's that's mad. What words do you say, Rick? In it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In it. Um I don't know what else to say. I've got I've got so a lot. saying sick a lot. Sick class. 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 I say class quite a bit. Yeah. Sick class. Uh four. Shout four a lot. I do shout <laughs> four is. a lot. Probably too often. You can never be too safe. Yeah, yeah it's true. Never, never, never be too safe. Um <coughs> you both have won twice on tour. And quite recent, yep. I'm saying quite recently because your your victories were last year, Sam. Weren't last they? year, yeah. You literally went win. Was it about summer last year? The yeah, COVID uh, king. Yeah, yeah. The COVID king. Yeah, during the summer of last year. I uh, think I think he's the only player to go. M- yeah, win, ever miscut win. Yeah, in European tour history, you're the ever. only player in European tour history to go win. Mm-hmm. Miss cut mm-hmm. win. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. outrageous. Mm. How does that even happen? We mentioned this on the course before, but I don't want to. We, we almost spoke too much on the golf course for the video that's coming very soon. It's going to be mm-hmm. absolute fire. But you said that how you went win, mm. miss cut win. How on earth? Obviously, you played amazing golf in that spell. How did you miss the cut? And what? Like, how well? How did you win first up? And how do you go win, miss cut win? You just. You, you can probably speak to it a little I bit think, too. I but when when you win, you just. It takes a lot mentally out of you. And, you know, after it being my first win as a professional, um, I just was not there the second I think week. I <laughs> know what happened. <laughs> I think we Sunday, all know what Sunday happened. Sunday night, <laughs> you and Hayden hit the town. And who uh, you've got... Well, tr- we, didn't, we didn't actually even hit the town. We couldn't even make it out of the hotel bar. Oh, yeah. COVID <laughs> rules. Yeah, <laughs> but at oh. the, the Sunday night at Celtic Manor, with it, it was me, Hayden... And uh, one of our other friends, Sean Crocker, it got a it got a little messy in there until about three a.m. I think. Really? Well, yeah, it was. Yeah, I did. What's it like when you win an event on tour? I mean, obviously, it's only your first one. I imagine your phone's blowing up. Mm. It must be a feeling of obviously, like kind of relief. I'm guessing something that I guess you guys has been such good golfers. Almost, did you expect to win? Like, we how does that actually feel? What's the emotions on that night? It's actually. You know, a lot of people when I when I won my first my first at, at Joburg Open, a lot of people told me to enjoy it. Um, I just didn't really understand what they were trying to say to me. And the night sort of happened quite quick, and um, the next day I was on my way. I had obviously full European tour status, um, and I was on the flight to Abu Dhabi. You know, playing with the world's best golfers in the world, and. Um, you know, it was just so surreal that, you know, those first 48 hours that I didn't actually take it in. I didn't didn't actually realize what I had actually done until, I would say, even till now. You know, now that I'm, I'm struggling a little bit on the tour and it actually makes you realize that, you know, you, you sort of take things for granted and, you know, how, how difficult it actually was to get over the line. Um, and I... And, and, in some way, I, I, I do sort of get unhappy with myself for, for taking that sort of stuff for granted, you know, yeah. because, you know, this game is a, is, is a very strange game and, and when it's going good, it's easy to sort of flow through life. And yeah. when you're struggling, it, it, it you know, it's it really is, you know, it's a game that, that sort of grounds you. You almost want to bottle that kind of confidence and that feeling exactly. straight after a win. Exactly. I mean, the, only, the only probably comparison I have, and, and probably you have as well, guy. You, you both aren't obviously married, are you? No. For me, I think a lot of people say it about your wedding day. You like told you, yeah. I said this the other day. Your wedding day, like I feel like people who have been married always say, "Any tips?" And they'll go, "Just enjoy it. Just it enjoy so the day. It'll go so quick." And you think, "What, what does that mean? What mm. do you mean enjoy? Of course, I want to enjoy it. Like, yeah. But it is. It, it's it's sometimes looking back at it after a few days, and you go. Oh yeah, God, that did go quick. Mm. And maybe did I enjoy it as well as I could have done? Did I really soak in everything? It's almost like in hindsight sometimes when you when you make a victory or you play great, mm. you kind of go, 
that because it's the moment that you're in, yeah. you kind of don't realize, God, I've got to absorb all this. Give me more yeah, exactly. of this. Exactly. It's when you go a couple of days later and, and you know, you're looking back at it, you might think, oh yeah, that was pretty cool, wasn't it? Yeah. I did that. Yeah, mm. exactly. You know, it, it wasn't, wasn't so long ago where uh, Sam and I were in Ireland and we were sitting with Rory just having a chat, you know, and, and it all happened so quick that it's not really something that you sort of can understand, it, you know, when, when you're playing, when, when you're sitting next to one of the world's, well, in my eyes, probably the world's best golfer in terms of flair and, and, and just the way that he plays. Yeah. You know, when, when you're sitting across the table from him, he's just a normal guy. You know, you, you, you are taking in what he's saying, but you're not actually, if you were to actually step back and look at it from another lens and, and actually think, I'm actually sitting with one of the world's <laughs> best golfers in the world, just yeah. having a conversation about, you know, his wife and, and you know, his his whole life, you know, Amazing. his personal life. It's just it's, it's incredible. But in a weird way, that's what you guys are trying to be. Yeah. Yeah. Like, even though you sat there with him and, and probably think, this is Rory McIlroy, you guys are trying to compete against him. You guys are trying to be the next... Rory McIlroy, whatever mm, it may yeah. be, that must also be weird, Sam, because you've you've obviously played with him a few times. Yeah. You said, yeah, we've just been watching a bit of the Ryder Cup, so we're actually recording mm. this on the Friday, so we don't, we, unfortunately, we don't know the results, but obviously we're presuming you're at one. Yeah, <laughs> um, so we might be wrong there. Um, for you there, Sam, like when you're playing with like Rory and you're watching him on TV as we've just done, mm. do you see that much of a separation between you and and the 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 best of the best? No. Um, you know, I feel like <clears throat> golf wise, I'm, you know, I got all, all the shots and all the, the tools to, you know, be competing every week in, week out with them. Um, you know, it's just for me doing it in a, um, more consistent manner. Yeah. Um, like, you know, like I just said, week in, week out, um, you know, and I know that I can do it. Um, you know, the people around me know that I can do it, but it's just about, getting myself there um and giving myself you know opportunities um you know i watch it can it can sometimes just be a mental click yeah you yeah. know i think if you if you look at even the top golfers on the european tour a lot of these guys have the potential to be Ryder cup players yeah but it's more of a mental aggression or determination drive like, I, I don't know if sam understands what i'm talking yeah, about but i do know what you mean it's yeah. it, it, it's like getting it done when you know you don't quite exactly have it or you know you're not quite feeling it it's digging deep in c certain situations and it's a belief you know, system getting it, done, mm -hmm. getting it done and knowing that you can get it done i've always thought tour pros think differently mm -hmm. yeah they I, do. I put you both in that category yeah, yeah. yeah. like it, you think differently and i guess then there must be some sort of levels of that process as well. Like mm, you'll definitely. think differently compared to a potentially maybe a challenge tour player, let's say, for example. Yeah. But then from you, PGA tour player might think differently. And then you get into like the top 20 players in the world might think differently. And you get to the top yeah. five players in the world. And again, mm. they may think completely differently again. Well, I mean, if you, if you, if you look at Brooks's comments, you know, not that I'm going to call him out on it, but you know, he, he was talking about the fact that, he sees him winning as many majors as Tiger. Yeah. You know, and then DeShambo <laughs> sort of broke down, you know, the amount of majors that he had won and, and the win percentage and so on and so forth. Do you believe that comment, by the way? Or do you think it's something he's saying for publicity or I I kind of think that he's saying it as almost planting a seed in his mind that that's where he would like to get his career to. Mm -hmm. I, d I don't know if he believes in it right now, but he may believe in it in five years if he keeps telling himself that. Yeah. yeah. That's my theory on it. I mean... I just think he's, yeah, just talking out of his ass, personally. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you want my honest know. opinion, but... Yeah, we hey. want that. That's great. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't yeah. know. I mean, I, I just, just don't think... I just... Me and actually my caddy were talking about this the other day, the day after he made the comments. There will... Yeah, you know, I can never say there'll be never... You know, another Tiger Woods, but, you know, some of the stuff that that man has done in the game of golf, um, you know, it's just unbelievable. Um, it's, you know, un it's untouchable to, to 
I mean, everybody really. No one through the two thousands. He was I mean, incredible. Tiger Woods is stat on made cuts is literally the most mind blowing thing I've ever heard. It's like hundred. It it's like one hundred and forty three straight made cuts or something ridiculous. You, you know what? I, I mean, I just don't know how that's possible. I'm actually annoyed that I started golf in ninety seven, similar to Rick, when obviously Tiger won the Masters, and I was six years old then. So I grew up with him, but he's real massive. It's 02 to 05, he was just yeah. unstoppable. Yeah. I kind of was old enough to know what was going on, but also not old enough to realise how much of a, like... How legendary. How, yeah, exactly that. Like thom- thom- phenomenal well, he if, was. Yeah, if you're yeah. watching football now, like soccer or whatever, everybody, in the, everybody knows now that Ronaldo and Messi are absolutely just legends, and you're mm. watching greatness and, and to almost take it all in because it's not going to be there forever. But I feel like I didn't get that with Tiger. I just... Took it for granted. Yeah. And like you said, yeah. imagine every week somebody making the cup, making the cup, like yeah. four I mean, years. I mean, there were, I've, you know, I have a close close relationship with, with Ian and, you know, he was up there a few times. This Ian. is Pulter for people. Yeah. It, it just, they're just dropping Rory and Ian in. Like, <laughs> you know what I want? Like, Sorry. We chat about Matt and Harry and whatever. Yeah. So we, we, we're name droppers, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Let me just get the sound effect. Sorry, that was just, that was just the name dropping on the table. Um, on, so you've, be, you've become quite pally with Ian Pulter. Yeah. So, but you know, when Tiger would get, you know, if you would see a W come on the board, you know, Terry, the guy who manages me, who was caddying for Ian all these times, you know, you would see a W on the board and you would know exactly what's coming. You know, what do you mean by that? Well, just know that he, people are going to back down from him and then, you know, he's going to. Oh, have you seen Woods on the board? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I meant W as in for Woods. Yeah. Um, You know, and he. I just don't see anybody having that sort of effect uh, on the game, you know, that he, he had on. It was, on it was something everything special. about his game, though, wasn't it? It was, like, long off the tee, certainly back in those days compared to the, yeah. the average golfer. His iron play was phenomenal. His putting, his he, mentality. He, he also, what Hayden said before about, he had that flair, mm. had that creativity. Mm. Like how many times did he hit it out of position? I mean, I've, I've still never seen anybody in that position on the 16th hole at Augusta. No. You know when he chips in? No. I don't see anybody there. No. no. Really? No. The guy that's in it there doesn't get TV coverage. That's what no. we're like. <laughs> and he there on a Sunday goes and holds it off from the side of the green. But it's incredible because it's like, you know, we talk about his iron play, but then on 16, you think, how how's he hit it there yeah. with yeah. such an exceptional iron play? And, exactly. then, and then the shot against Ricky at Memorial was that? The flop shot off that down slope? Yes. Oh, yeah, when it was going, everything was falling away from yeah. him towards the water. Yeah, that shot's a joke. What was the bunker one with the club twirl, the furry bunker? Oh, that uh, was fairly, Tory was that fairly that was recently? Years ago. Yeah, that when, was he, when he like, yeah. sliced it around. Yeah. No, that was, no, that was uh, a d- massive draw. W- was it? No, no, a massive slice around the tree in WGC in Mexico. That was fairly recently, wasn't it? Yeah, that it was, was, that was in ago, like yeah. second edition Tiger. Might be, might be a silly question, but for you two, a little bit younger than me, but did you grow up adoring Tiger? Yeah, for me, yeah. He was my boy. Yeah, yeah, he's the reason why I play golf. Yeah. Um, and, that, and that's mad because, so when when was about the year you started playing golf? Can you remember? When I was five, so 2001-ish time. So that's prime time, yeah. Tiger. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, and I just remember yeah. seeing this guy on TV and I thought he was a total badass when I was five and I just wanted it to be like Tiger and yeah. And in a weird way, you lived near Yeah, him, yeah, right? yeah, he was, yeah. He was in Orlando, I was in Orlando and... Um, you know, I remember going. I remember seeing him hit hit a flop shot somewhere. He did something crazy. Hit a flop shot somewhere, and we we lived on a golf course. And I went out the back, and I just tried to hit this flop shot for a couple hours. Just remember watching him <laughs> hit this thing, and I just obviously I couldn't do it. But <laughs> yeah, just just yeah, crazy. Have you had a chance to meet him? No, um, not like I've met him, said hello, but that's it. Um, never had like a com- Dubai. Was that Dubai? No, it was at the U.S. Open at Pebble Beach a couple of years ago, yeah. Imagine if you actually just turned around and went, hey, Sam. I know, I know, yeah. Be incredible, wouldn't it? Mm. Love, love what you do. I know, I mean, I would just just fall over. <laughs> <laughs> at what point, though, like, seriously now, I think I said this to you both again, off camera before, but you've both won twice in the European Tour. That is serious. So, like, I'd ga- I guess most guys in the European Tour obviously know the pair of you. Like... Mm. I'm guessing Tiger has an interest in just general golf. At what point do those boys start to actually know who you are? Like, they, they must do. They I must mean, know, know who you are. I, know, I, I, th- I definitely think that the European tour players, who you know the the Ryder Cup names, mm-hmm. as you would as you would call them, I think a lot of them really keep in touch with what's going on on the tour that they play. Mm-hmm. Um, even if they are in the states, 
I think they do have a have a real interest in what's going on because you know in a couple of years they may actually be playing with that person mm -hmm. yeah. you know um and I actually think you know it's going completely off topic I think I think that's why Europe in general well of late have been so strong in the Ryder Cup is yeah. because they have that sort of bit more of a team mentality mm, so to speak yeah that mm. you know as as we would say in South Africa yes you know which is like a support <laughs> he, yes. mm. yeah Yes. Yeah, like, like a spirit. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, yeah going off topic. But I, I really, I'm I'm voting for Europe. Uh, that's well, I don't know. We, again, this podcast is going to come out two days after it's finished, and we we might look like we have egg on our face. <laughs> God, question for you, Rick. Go what would you it. rather do now? You walk out of here, right? Yeah. You go to get some petrol. Yeah. And you think you know what? I'm going to buy a scratch card. Okay. Just for a quid. Don't know why. You do it. Twenty five grand. Okay. Or you find out that Tiger Woods knows who you are. I find out, that's it. He says, like, he goes, and he does, like, think, oh, yeah, my son's always watching those YouTube videos. Uh, Rick Shields. I go with Tiger. Over 25 grand. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah I do. That. At what point does that money stop, though? 50 grand. I'm not sure. Like, 150 grand on the scratch card, or Tiger knows who you are. The pause, which you think you go for Tiger. I think, yeah. I think I would. I think I would. I don't could, know, because could, could it almost, in a weird way, and just to go back on that, I, it's almost really not about the money, I know that sounds daft, but like a scratch card is just a, a chance of luck. Where if Tiger or his son, whoever watches the videos and he knows where, that's like everything I've worked towards, mm. like mission complete. Like mm. number one goal on my list is Tiger to know who I am. He might that's well it. Pull, pull to some watches, doesn't he? <laughs> but we, we obviously, life. as we said last time, and obviously it's fitting today, but when... Um, we met Poulter at Wobe, yeah, yeah. and his son was saying, oh, yeah, watch the videos and stuff. You know what? He was such a nice guy, yeah, Poulter. He's a good dude. Really good I, dude. He gets a bad rap, doesn't he? Well, that's what I said before. For some reason, I didn't dislike Poulter, but I didn't actually like him. I don't mm. quite know why. I thought it was... I've said this before. I thought it was a bit flash for his Ferraris. I didn't know if it was a bit like... I don't know. I think I it think was... I, but in real life, honestly, he was so I sound. I had so much time for us, but mm. well, something for Rick and chatted to me yeah. as well. He was class. He's I always think. been really good to me. I think his self-confidence is a lot of the time misrepresented as mm. arrogant. Yeah. Um, you can back and it there's up, nothing, fair, can't And you know, at the yeah. end of the day, there's nothing, he, he's a sportsman, you know, he's a professional sportsman. You know, being confident is what you need to do. In a weird and way, I feel like if he was American, sorry to interrupt, if, I feel like if he's American, he'd almost be praised. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, you, yeah. Brooks Kupka. Yeah. That's what oh, I mean. Oh, yeah, 100%. Like, if I'd you, say Kepka's kind of worse for that. Yeah, if you probably exactly. look at the two really strong-willed, strong-minded, confident above their kind of, not their station to some degree, but Nick Faldo and Ian Poulter, and both of them have mixed responses in, in the US, let's say. Yeah. Because I, I don't know if it's being perceived as we, like, English are quite prim and proper, quite humble, mm, quite yeah. like... I don't know. We love an underdog who takes the mick out themselves, i.e. Uh, Marcus Armitage. Yeah. That's what people over and here want. Yeah, and, they and want. Beef. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to do that. <laughs> what was it? Bullet. <laughs> <And the> bullet. <laughs> Is that kind of like more realistic guy who feels more kind of relatable? That's what yeah. people seem to like more. But equally, there's nothing wrong with being confident if you've got the skill set to back yeah, it up, which yeah. clearly Poulter has. Another question then, speaking of Poulter, obviously he's never won a major yet. He may well go on to. It's, who knows? For you guys, like obviously winning a, a European tour event was a massive goal. I'm sure that you've both done. At what point, and it might be that obviously already there now, do you start with anything about majors? Does that come into like, do you literally now be thinking every year, I've got potentially three, four chances to win a major? Or is it something you think I'm working towards in three, five years' time? It's more of just like a, um, just sort of a progression thing. Um, you know, I don't, I don't really like to put, um, you know, make goals around performance-based goals. I like to make my goals around, um, you know, making myself better in certain areas um, that I feel like I can. Um, Got a lot of work, bro. Yeah, I know. <laughs> 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 it's really distance after today. Those drives that Hayden was bombing. <laughs> um, you know, so I wouldn't say, you know, I got, you know, X, Y, and Z amount of chances for the next X, Y, and Z amount of years. Yeah. Um, you know, I just think it'll happen when it happens sort of thing. You're, you're almost controlling the controllables. Yeah. Like you can control what you in. can basically, control. Basically, I just want to, you know, make myself the best golfer that I can be and well, see what happens, happens from there, you know. If, I think if you, you know, play if you play good enough golf for a long enough period, 
you're going to get yourself into situations that you, you know, you can actually think these things to yourself. Because yeah. right now, well, I'm in a situation where I could potentially maybe get one major event. So, you know, the whole mentality is very different. You get, in in a, I, get in one major event yeah, a year. Yeah. Whereas if you getting into all four majors and then you're getting into all four WGCs, you know, all of a sudden the pressure's not really on you, you know, in terms of the fact that, oh, well, this is my only event that I can actually truly make a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. You know, for them, you know, for the guys who are at the top, you know, they have the cushion of being able to obviously play these events and still obviously play another, another regular season in Europe or in America. But it is quite nice to sort of have that cushion to know that you've got four WGCs that you're getting sort of you know, yeah. pitch up and play, yeah. get paid, of course. and you're going to sort of keep your card just with that cash almost. Yeah, that's crazy, what, isn't it? What, mm. what do you think? Like, it's a question for Rick, and I'll see how you two kind of answer it. I know you probably will have a very different answer and might not look at it like this, but obviously if you've never won a European Tour event, you might not necessarily expect to go and win a major. But how many European Tour events, Rick, would you expect? Like... If someone's won 10 times on the European tour, do you think, right, they should be chasing for a major next? What is that number? Like, is it three? Is it five? Is it 10? Is it 15? Like, where do you see somebody like, like, so Fitzpatrick now has won six European tour events, but yeah. never won a major. Do you feel like he's a kind of golfer thinking he needs to win one or he's still got time or? Oh, should, I, like, I think, I think any player still got time. Phil Mickelson proved that this year. 100%. Mm. Yeah. You know, I think he was the first player to ever win in his fifties. Yeah. And I think at the end of the day, a lot, all these tour pros, the best in the world, whatever, Matt Fitzpatrick, whether it's Lee Westwood, whether it's Ian Poulter that have not there's, won. There's, there's another guy who's playing probably <clears throat> the best golf of his life is Lee, Lee Westwood. Westwood. Yeah. Mm. You know, he's, you know, a lot of people would say that he's towards the end of his career. He's playing the best golf got, of his career. 100%. Right now. Bad, isn't it? But who, who, who puts, nobody well, needs to put a benchmark well, on it. Lee really? Westwood's won 25 times on the European tour. Bernard Langer. But he's never won a major. But th so that mm. gets spoken about. If he'd have won 12, would it like... You know what was horrible today? So I watched the first tee shots of Lee Westwood. Mm -hmm. Have a guess what the guys were sh shouting, the American crowd. Well, like, never won a major. Yes. Where's your majors? Mm. Like, and, and I think it's almost... Obviously, I'm sure he'd love to win one. Don't get me wrong. But it's almost the media. It's almost the... the, the preconception like nobody wants to be the best player that's never won a major but, yeah really i don't but, know but equally you're almost a victim of your own success to some degree it's like mm. until finau won recently he'd not won for ages and you're like oh he needs to win more but it's he's doing won. so well every week that you focus on the fact mm. he's not won yeah. whereas like because westwood's done so well over so long that's why it sticks out more obviously it hasn't won a major well, i think this year at royal st george's which i definitely want to come on to with sam in a minute because he played in the royal st george's open this year was it the long? Was it the most? Oh, was it the most most majors that anyone's ever played in? I think it was without winning one. Was it? I think I want to say fifty. That might it be was something silly more, numbers. Actually. It was. It was huge amount of numbers that he's played in, but never won. But I'm sure he's done all right out of majors. Yeah, he's not know? done too bad. No, <laughs> I'm think, sure he's doing all I right. Think he'll be just fine. <laughs> but then again, you look at somebody like a I'm trying to think of uh, Brooks Kepka. Like Brooks Kepka's not won that many times. He's PGA. won four majors, hasn't he? But how many PGA Tours? I think he's won more majors than he's won yeah. PGA yeah. Tours. Yeah. Yeah. Regular PGA Tours titles, I think, won, I think he has. Has yeah. he won five majors? Four. He's won four, four majors. And, and I think he's won two or three regular PGA Tour titles. Like he's almost the complete oppo opposite way around. That's the way it's going to go more, I bet, though, isn't it? These Because majors are such a focus, obviously, for tour players, aren't they? Certainly for the elite on the PGA Tour. Well, you look at now, like, the best players in the world, realistically, how many actual tournaments are they playing in? Yeah. Let's, let's say Rory, how many how many tournaments does he play in a year? So you got the... F 20. You got, well, you got eight, right? You got 22. four four and four. Four WGCs, four majors. You toss in four, 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 <laughs> 20? Around 20-ish? Sorry, I was doing the math. Around right. 20? So... Maybe a, a little bit more, quarter, 20, 23. Nearly a quarter of those tournaments are major tournaments. Yeah. yeah. Well, the thing is, Crazy, is isn't it? On, the, on, on the US tour, every tournament's a major tournament. Because the money... <laughs> I mean, it's it's crazy. Oh, it's a joke. What's the difference? In if you went to a kind of middle of the road European tour event and the same event, if you like, on the PJ tour, how much would the winner get? Difference? I'll, let, I'll let Hayden answer this question. <laughs> well, we played. We, we um, does it, why does he? He's had some experience here. No, well, well, no, just just. So we play Qatar during the same time as the players. If you win Qatar, that's what the caddy gets for the winner. Of the players. Oh, my day. So it's like tenfold, essentially. Wow. Well, yeah, because you normally 10%. 10%. Yeah. 
that's what we're talking about. Well, it, it was a and huge and paycheck at the same so position. I mean, and the players, is, the players is obviously. And they, yeah, but they're also talking about the players getting tuned up even more, <laughs> right? And they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna average every event almost at ten million. I wonder. We're talking crazy money, man. I wonder <laughs> what place you'd have had to come in the players to earn the same amount of money for the Qatar Open. I think you make a cut. You make cut. No. No, you probably had to finish top 10. No. To, uh, think to make about one, it, bro. For 15 million, we play, for, we play during a Rolex event, right? Yeah. We play for 7 million. Mm -hmm. That's half. Mm -hmm. You make the cut at a Rolex, you're making 30, 30 grand. So you're going to make probably almost 100 grand for yeah. just making the cut. At the players, I bet some yeah, of the caddies like, yeah, on the just under about eighty. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. somewhere around there. I bet some of the top caddies that are on the PJ tour right. are making as much as some of the good players on the European tour. Well, it was always, it was always they, like Steve Williams was the highest paid sports person in New Zealand. Yeah, right? of all the rugby, rugby players and everything, like caddying for Craziness. Tiger. Yeah, that's it's mental. The How? US, the US is blowing up with money. Yeah, yeah. is that the well, goal? So it's you a, and it's a, you know it's a Tiger effect too. You know, I mean, so he much moved decimal point in there. Yeah. The golf industry would not be anywhere, you know. He ca he uh, came at probably the best time as well because that's when TV started really mm. getting yeah, big time. And then social media, yeah, yeah, I know social media was a little bit later, but you know, well, even the internet was coming internet in. was coming in. You couldn't and, you know. really place him at a better time. No, you know? it was perfect. Yeah. Do you play on the? You, you don't, do you have a PJ Tour card? No, Sam? I don't know. Have you had one though? No. Is that the? Kind of goal for you then, obviously. Yeah. With being, uh, yeah. is that the goal for you as well, Hayden? I think I think that's the goal for any professional golfer. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would so, say. But so. let's say someone like um, I'm going to use Richard Bland for an example. Obviously, he won last year. Yeah. At the, at was it this year? This year. Was it this year at Belfry? Feels more recent than yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think year. it was this year. Yeah. This year at the Belfry, he's been on the European Tour forever. Could he have gone? I don't know. I don't know the logistics. Like, could he have gone to PGA Tour if he wanted to, or is that more of a well, personal he, perspective for him? No, I don't think. I don't think he. I think he was trying to get there. Right. Uh, I just don't think he really got over the line. So I think again, there's another guy who's playing the best golf of his career. Crazy, well. isn't it? And again, an, a, a, a statesman, let's say, who's been out there forever. Yeah. So I think if you gave him the option, you said, "Rich, you want to go to the US Tour?" I, don't, I think he'd bite your arm off. Just because sure. it's a huge more payday, I isn't mean, it? I mean, it's yeah, I mean, it's be silly not to. <laughs> yeah, you want to play in the, yeah. Is it better for travel then or not? Because obviously it's Definitely. one country, but it's still like travel. I think I they're quite good with following the coast. Yeah, they honest. do. They, yeah, they, they schedule it really well. They, uh, you know, obviously they have the Florida swing, mm -hmm. um, California, West Coast swing in California. So they do a really good job. But it, it's like a proper moving circus anyway. Yeah, exactly. But uh, the European tour, you know, before, before the pandemic hit, you know, they've sort of started to add tournaments in. There were some, there. There was some curious flights that we've had to do. <laughs> yeah, there was some. There, there was, was some. some strange ones. But, but where well, you had to like go from yeah, doing around yeah. places. But yeah. for the most part, they normally do a pretty good job of you know, yeah. keeping us close to where we don't have to, you know, fly 15 hours. Like flying, yeah. flying from Morocco to China. Yeah, that's hairy. And then I think from China to Valderrama. That was what that was the worst trip I've ever had in my life. Yeah, yeah. I feel like we're having a really nice chat, and it's really insightful. And you know, I feel like we dived into a few things that I didn't really expect us to dive into. However, I'm enjoying it, and I hope everyone listening is too. Taught me, Sam, about this year playing in the Open. Mm. What was that yes. like? Yes, that was your first Open. First Open. That was probably the coolest experience I've ever had on a golf course. Um, you know, you walk from the putting green, you go up these stairs, um, you know, and you just, you're walking across this bridge and you take a couple steps down and it just says, um, welcome and a picture of the Claret Jug right, right before you walk underneath the grandstands of the first tee. Um, you know, and you sort of walk through there and you see the Claret Jug on the left side and, you know, you got the grandstand around the first tee. Um, you know, I got there three minutes before my tea time, whatever. So I'm just sort of soaking it all in. That seems um, quite last minute. Yeah, I know. I'm always lastminute.com. <laughs> always my caddy, Mick, is always panicking, flapping <laughs> about me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, get on the tee. So it's no on the tee from England, Sam Horsfield. 
and I was putting the ball in the ground, and, you know, they all started clapping and going crazy, and I took a step back, and I literally had goosebumps everywhere in my body, and I just had to take, I just had to stand there for a second and just sort of let myself calm down and just sort of chill out. I was like, dang, this is, this is badass. This, that was, that was probably the coolest the experience. The coolest or the scariest or the most nervous? Like, No, I wouldn't, it wasn't even nervous. Like, I was just sort of just chilling. But that's, that's a bit cool. But, but it was just like, I don't know, just the atmosphere and just the whole thing going on, you know, and it was, there was, I think there was like Rory or someone big was like pretty close to me and pretty close in the tea time. So there was quite a lot of people around, um, you know, so it was, it was really cool. And then you, did you strike one down? I first? did. I did. A hit, I hit, I actually hit a little pop-up draw. Um, <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, it was a little pop up draw, but uh, had a little adrenaline running, so it went went pretty far. Um, and then yeah, made par and. I, feel like I remember on. watching it. Did you? Yeah, yeah I do. I feel like it, I remember watching it, it. It was a little pop up draw. If you remember watching it, <laughs> do you? Um, so let's say your Aiden Sam's out playing in the open. Are you literally glued watching him? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I'm glued watching it, but I, I'm. I definitely have a lot more interest in it, uh, especially if I have some close friends you know, participating. And uh, I knew that Sammy was having you know, a pretty good week, you know, just playing with some of the players that he was playing with. And, you know, I knew that he was that he was enjoying it because, you know, I, I, I know exactly how he feels, you know, like to play in your first Open is mm. is something where, special where about you, it. Was it true in your first one? Yeah, true was my my first. When Stenson won? Yeah, that's when uh, Phil Mickelson. Ask him about his front nine on Thursday. Was it was yeah, so front nine on Thursday? Yeah, so, you know, same thing, first tee nerves, right, play the practice round on Tuesday, first hole, you know, we sort of play the prevailing down off the ride. Yeah, no, this is this is four one off the tee, got to play short of the bunker, you know, just got to be all professional, you know, playing the open. <laughs> and uh, I feel like you didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so we get into the first tee Thursday, and I look down at this four iron, they've called my name out already. And I look down at this four iron, it's a blade, and I think, there's there's no ways I can I hit this. I <laughs> and there's honestly what thoughts going through your head. Yeah. yeah. I can't believe it. I mean, my hands, I can't feel my fingers, right? And I'm standing there, and I, and I just turn to my caddy, Tom. I said, man, I, 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 need, I need the biggest thing we've got here. <laughs> and he's given me the driver, and I've just hit it up the left. Actually, a really, really good tee shot, considering... I've hit it up the left and ended up making two eagles, three birdies for uh, a thirty and lipped out what? on. You were leading the open. I was yeah. leading the open. Through that's nine. how. That's how his. Uh, that's how his introduction to the open was going. We came tied third, yeah. Yeah, so that's I did, and it was, and it was also on my side of the draw. I think I was fourth. Right. So we got a pretty tough end of the draw as well. A lot of those tournaments, the links tournaments. I teed up. I teed mm-hmm. up. I te- on Friday, I teed up at four, four o'clock, I think, in the afternoon. Got off the golf course at about nine, and then was first out on Saturday. Oh my god! So I got off the course at nine, and then I was back on the range by like half five. Was yeah, pegging go- it. Was turned around well though to come from early on Saturday to then finish in tied third. Yeah, I yeah, shot uh, a first off on on the Saturday. I think I shot sixty six, which moved me from like sixty. Fourth to thirteenth or something. Wow! Yeah, it was a pretty tough day on Saturday. Was that what I know? I'm guessing. Don't if you had expectations going into it. Was it just making the cut or like tied thirty if you first open? Must have been happy with that. I'm guessing. Well, those dreams were shattered when I shot thirty on the front nine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You've got one hand on the claret jug. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was, I was already <laughs> thinking where I was going to take this picture. You know, I'm Instagram. The Instagram <laughs> caption, all this stuff. <laughs> Who am I going to thank in my speech? You know. You know. But like, um, that sounds like, like Rick. It is. You're like this is this golf is too easy. Yeah, and uh, but little did I know that the back nine and Trin is just it's it's a ridiculously tough back nine. Um, Have you got a screenshot anywhere of you at the top of the leaderboard? I that that yellow leaderboard. Yeah, I think I actually do. Have that. I the yellow leaderboard. Yeah, That's sick. I do. But um, yeah, I ended up coming in. Yeah, with an ambulance. So yeah, I well. ended up shooting oh, well. under, but. Oh well, oh, and then this year, Sam, you played mm. with Rory. 
I did. On Sunday? Sunday, yes, I did. What was that like? Um, awesome. Um, you know, I've gotten to play with him, and now that was my second time. Um, gotten to know him a little bit. He's a great dude. Um, but just, you know, everything that he brings. Um, Is the just, crowd just ridiculously yeah, more? It just brings it just brings an extra it factor. What um, is it like? Is it like four times bigger crowd or ten times bigger I kinda, crowd? I kind of like that though. Yeah, it's kind of nice to be honest with you. You're sort of like you're in your own tunnel. Yeah, dude, you're in a zone. Like you, d- you just sort of just I, see, you just sort of see fairway, see green, just sort of get on. I mean, obviously, you got a lot of commotion. Um, you know, like when we were, I, I, I prefer more commotion. Uh, because yeah. I would, I would much rather have a sea of people moving mm. than just one guy with the brightest yellow jersey he could find. Mm. <laughs> you know, mm. that's, yeah, I agree. that's off putting. Yeah, I agree. Really? Mm. Um, you know, but like the first, the first green. Um, you know, Rory, Rory was putting, and some guy just passed out on the side of the side of the green, and we just had to wait for an ambulance or for like no five way. minutes. Yeah, I didn't know that. It, no, but yeah, it yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes on, you know, a lot more commotion and stuff like that happens. What yeah, it hap- no, it happens quite a lot. Like, it happened... Uh, yeah, what, what do you mean it happens a lot? Oh, I don't get it. At Wentworth, it happened. Yeah, Our tea times in the afternoon got delayed 25 minutes because some, some d- dude had a heart, heart attack. attack. Oh, my, my goodness. Yeah, and yeah. then his wife next to him passed out. I feel like you never hear no. of this yeah. stuff. No, no yeah. There's so there's like a lot of stuff like that. Feed that would be. I know, no, yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's quite... You know, it's I would say pretty I'll hectic. I'd like say commotion. twice a year. I'd say twice a year it probably happens yeah. where you know one of the spectators, you know, either gets hit really badly with a ball or mm. heart attack or was it Brooks that hit someone's eye that time? Yeah, oh yeah, that, that was, was, that was at the Ryder Cup oh, in yeah. Paris. Yeah. Well, um, I, I remember reading something where Tiger, if it, if it was a huge crowd, and he knew if he finished his hole. If, as soon as the ball went in the hole, everyone would run to the next mm, team. Yeah. Mm. So he would try and do as best he can to make sure he put it last mm, in the yeah. group. Mm. Does do, did you see that Rory did any of that or not really? No, no. Um, and, and I don't do think you, it's the same, is it? It's but, not. But, but do no. you find that? Do you find that when when people like you are playing with Rory? Because mm. certainly at the Open, he's yeah. got to be the, one of the, one of the most followed players. Mm-hmm. People want to go and see someone like him or yeah. Bryson or Brooks, whoever. Um, did you find that when he'd finished a hole, did you find that the crowd kind of were running off or or not? Not I'd really. Like think, I like to think they didn't. I'd like no, to think they showed no, some respect. No, no, no. The English, the English crowd. That's what I was going to say. Are unbelievable. To be honest with you, they're they're probably the best in the world. And no, I'm, they, not, I'm not just educated. saying that. I promise. Actually, they are. <laughs> Me and Mike Hattie, we talk Irish. about it all the time. Yeah, they're really, really good. So uh, in what way? Because etiquette. I think it's, it's, it's like yeah. not, when you don't see any of the get in the hole stuff, do you? As yeah, much, and it's you know, and it's they're respectful too. You know, they're not they understand. You know, the sometimes they understand the game. Yeah, sometimes you know you might you might hit a good shot to thirty feet. You know, and they understand that that's a good shot. You know, and they'll clap and say good shot, Sam, or good shot, Hade, whatever. You know, whereas you know, in you know like America or some other places, they might not be as welcoming to that. Or oh. understanding, you know, yeah, a, yeah, lot of, understanding a lot of sorry, yeah. a lot of a lot of the time, you know, you can actually have a pretty difficult shot in your hands, and you know, the sort of idea from somebody who maybe doesn't understand golf is, well, he's a professional, he should be able to hit it to the green, very close, and if he doesn't, well, then I'm disappointed. Yeah. Whereas I feel like the spectators in the UK you know, and and Ireland have a very good etiquette, a very good understanding of the game. So if we've got a chip and we chip it to 25 feet and it's not a very difficult chip, they'll probably not clap yeah. because they know that by clapping, it will infuriate mm. infuriate us even more. Yeah. So they've got that understanding. Whereas some, some places we go, we chip it to 25 feet. And it's like, yeah, and you'd rather and not. you think, mm. Please no. <laughs> I, get, I, I, I don't yeah. want to be throwing. Yeah. Yeah. That on. depends on like where the event is and what the infrastructure is like. If it was somewhere quite mm. remote where people just who don't like golf, going to a golf event on it's a day out. Let's mm. go and see what it's yeah, like. Yeah. Whereas I think the open in particular, you do get casuals, but you get a lot more serious people go into the open, don't you? Yeah. you see them in the yeah. golf shoes and they'll travel a couple of hours to come and watch. I suppose mm. if, let's say you're playing in Dubai and behind one of the grandstands, they've got like a a, a 
Bacardi bar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it, and it's like they're having a bit of a party mm, or whatever. Yeah. And, and either Girls they're not coming for free. Yeah, you know, they're, they're either yeah, not yeah. they're either not bothering watching you, or even if they hit, you hit a shot, they're like, oh, yeah. yeah. Didn't go in the hole. Yeah, you yeah, put like a yeah. thirty foot to like an inch. Like I didn't go in. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah, and <laughs> just keep on like, walking. Sometimes, like you know, some events, it's almost like the golf is just like on the side. Yeah, you know, that people actually go to the golf to get a few scoops in them. Yeah, you know, that's pretty much what it's all about. Yeah, and yeah. and yeah. how do you feel about that? I don't. I don't have a problem. You know, as long as. Again, like etiquette is what's important. Yeah. You know, if if I'm trying to, at the end of the day, I'm trying to do my job. Yeah. You know, and I'm not going to come walk into your into your office and start making noise. You know, whilst you're on a phone call or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I sort of expect the same from you. Yeah. You know, you could yeah, make, I agree. You can make as much noise as you like, but once there's a player who's over his golf shot. It doesn't take a lot to, you know, yeah, be silent be, for five gotta, seconds. Yeah, you got to be quiet for 10 seconds, five, yeah. five, 10 seconds, and that's it. You know, got to be respectful. You can hoot and holler all you want the rest of the time, but, you know, once we're standing over it, getting ready to whack it, yeah. Question Keep for you in. guys then, I think might resonate with a lot of our audience. So we've got a mixed bag of our audience, some great golfers, some new golfers, some very casual golfers. Obviously, you guys are, are, are sponsored by brands or at least get your clubs for free or whatever, but, like... I know you've got some of the older stuff in your bag, certainly, mm-hmm. Sam, the three wood and the five would I think is M5, is it, from a couple M6, of years ago? Yeah. Um, how important do you think like the latest and greatest gear actually is, certainly for you guys, but also for like amateurs that you might play with in pro-ams or friends that you've got? Do you think like modern clubs make a massive difference over five, six years ago, or not so much? Um, I think there's a, there's a threshold. Um, you know, there's... You can... You know, I wouldn't say, you know, if something came out in 2021, it is better than something that came out in 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think, you know, maybe something that came out in 2017, you know, then it might be time to upgrade. Um, you know, but for me, I just, I have a free, free bag. Um, you know, I can, I play whatever I want and, um, you know, I, I got fitted and I think fitting is probably the most important thing, um, you know, with golf equipment. Um, you know, and just see what's best for you from there. Um, I, I, certainly, I, think I certainly think fitting for for players of your caliber mm. is outrageous because, like, that yeah. is literally fine but, uh, tuning you to the, to the device. I would. I mean, I know, <clears throat> I know this sounds maybe ill informed, but I, I, I still, I still feel that even if you're a golfer who's wanting to, you know, start the game, you know, that I think. Starting the game with good basics is what's key. You know, we can all teach a good grip. We can all teach a good posture. But if you're swinging a golf club that is not built for you, you're going to inevitably bring in bad habits. And that's why I think from from an early age, you know, getting fitted is the right way to go because you don't want to implement bad moves into your golf swing just because the club is not built for you. Yeah. And I and I think even if you are older and starting up the game, I still think I still think it's the way to go because you're just going to make the game even harder See, by just swinging a golf club. Yeah, that's and not for you. Yeah, your 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 body's going to react mm. to you know what the what the club's telling it. So we've had this discussion before fitting, and I used to be a fitter for Nike. I think I said to you before, but mm-hmm. I, I kind of see both sides. Like for you guys, obviously, it goes out saying you have the clubs yeah. that are best for you. And certainly for amateurs, there's certain things that matter. Again, if you're six foot five or five foot five, you're not going to use the same golf clubs that you shouldn't be doing, really. Mm. But what I still think we're lacking so much, I don't know how much you guys see this is what you do, but like you only get fitted by literally the most expert custom fitters, quite literally mm. the best in the business, with the golf ball you play on the turf that you want yeah. to play enough. But for mo- so many amateurs these days, they go on like the, the retailers started pumping this fitting message so much because they want to get more sales essentially. And yeah. then people doubt the clubs they've got five, ten years ago, which I get. But then you go for a fitting, often in certain retailers, naming no names, but there might be someone who doesn't know that much. And mm-hmm. you test one seven iron off a mat with a range ball. There's a lot there's a long way to go still for the average punter to get anything like what defi- you guys get. I definitely think there can be some sort of intermediate fitting standard. Yeah. Right, sure, yeah, I'm, sure. I'm I'm pretty sure, you know, that we're able to, you know, click shafts in and out of drivers. You can easily have a multitude of different, even if you had to color code them, you know, pink, 
whatever whatever is the softest you know is this color whatever is the hardest is this color you know i know there is more to that that, yeah but i definitely think there can be more done in terms of the intermediate fittings i agree well that's proven by like when you go to again a retailer they'll have drivers they'll have shafts like you're saying they might even have different grip things potentially But then you want to try Vokey. They don't have any demos. You have to tape mm. one up and go on a range. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. oh, so you're saying that drivers are important to get fitted for. And irons are, but you can't test your wedges, the ones yeah. that use more than any other yeah. club that are so important. It's, so not, it's, it's not perfect but yet, I still, is it? But I, still, no. but I still think that, you know, even though it's still wedge play, I mean, there's, well, realistically, in, in my eyes, you know, you, you can get a multitude of different graphites, but, I mean, you, there's only a, few shafts that you really need in mm-hmm. a wedge you know i mean with a driver you know it is more important because there's it's more speed it, yeah and, it's more little different know. grinds and that now so there's yeah. grinds and lost and you have to put tape on the face net of a mat but you know are you guys do you guys are you into equipment because i feel like there's two types of tour pro uh, yeah, I agree. there's the guys that go oh yeah i've got a 6.5 tip an inch one layer of extra on the hand here and other guys are like i have no idea I don't even have a clue what shaft I have in my driver. Really? I literally didn't know until the other day. You asked, yeah, you, you asked him about this putter shaft. Oh, yeah. And yeah. It, look, yeah. it looks really fancy. You're like, uh, I think it's this. It's yeah. like... Yeah. yeah. But, it, but it wasn't just a standard steel shaft. It was like no. some graphite LA golf yeah. shaft. I think I think we have a pretty good understanding of what we have in the bag in terms of like... You what, know what, what I think? Tor Pros are very... <laughs> yeah, yeah, brand uh, you know shaft. <laughs> and I that's think it. But tell me about lies. For me, it doesn't... And you can probably speak to this too. It, it's all about what feels and looks right to yeah. you. I can, you know, swing. I go. I don't care if it says whatever on I it. I can swing a club that is clearly numbers wise not the club for me, but it, it can be just the way that the club sits, the way the club kicks through impact. It can be anything. The way it just sounds, makes me feel. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like, are you guys then? Are you more feel a number? I feel like that's again two ways of thought. Feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah just feel. all feel. So you, what, what about if you were trying to drive her from one of the brands that you might be working with or whatever that was mm. five yards longer yeah. or a shaft, but for you didn't feel quite as good? Would you prefer the one that feels better but maybe feels sacrifice better. a bit? Yeah, feels so better. I, yeah, well, that's what I'm doing right now. The, the I'm using a driver right now that is slower than, you know, what I possibly could be using, but I know that it goes straight and it draws. It's and so it's not going to go into trouble that often and... It's going to keep me in the short grass. I think that's a, a sin, it, building trust with, with yeah. whatever it is that you yeah. hit. You know, mm. I mean, I played with Jamie Donaldson about two weeks ago and he whipped out a five wood mm-hmm. that was older than me. I remember you telling me this, yeah. Do you remember it what was, model it I'm, was? I'm not joking with you. This thing was older than me. He <laughs> says he's had, he's had to replace the shaft once and the head once. He had two. <laughs> well, no, that's, not it, that's not yeah, the same club then, is it? No, oh, well... <laughs> Well, <laughs> I've had the, the same, same club, the same, the same brand. Sorry, the, yeah, same, yeah, the, same, the, same, the same head model, the I same head was, model. But I, I mean, it's it was literally like twenty eight years old. Yeah, like, I think it was model. some Callaway thing, like Big Bertha thing. No, and he like still, and he thing. still, he smashes it today. No, it's tiny. You should see this thing. This thing's literally that's, the size that's, of a penny. That's what's mad though. Really like you guys, gruesome. obviously on the range, and there'll be fitters there with Trapman GC cord or whatever, and you're mm. looking at numbers and spins and launch, which obviously all matters to maximise your performance. But equally, if you've got three holes to play and you're playing well and you want to kind of go par par birdie to win the tournament or make a cut, you don't hit a shot and go, I had 2,000 spin, I'm happy with no, that. It's no. like, I hit the fairway, that's a long one. But yeah. another question then kind of following on from that a little bit, you guys, obviously long hitters, we saw that today. There's some mm. bombs hit out there. <laughs> How much has kind of... The whole Bryson thing as well recently, like, are you guys kind of chasing more distance so you're kind of happy where you're at? Or do you think it's as important as us, as kind of golf fans that we are, so Rick and myself, we almost distance everything now, we're getting told how important it is. Is that the truth actually out on the course when you're playing in these tournaments? Not for me. Not for me. No. Really. <clears throat> I think, uh, and I and, and I can't really talk for both sides, but, you know, there are a lot of golf courses that we play that are just not suitable for that style of play. You know, if you you go out, you know, just trying to swing it as hard as you can with the drive. Imagine trying to wing it at 200 ball ball speed around Kranz. Yeah, trying to wing it, you know, 200 ball speed in Kranz. Yeah. In Switzerland, you're going to shoot numbers. So that's because you know. the golf course in Europe aren't <coughs> set up for that sort of distance. I just feel like it's, you know, we went you from Kranz one week, you know, which is... In six irons off tees to, 
you know, the next week was in Italy, which was 7,500 yards, and Bama is, you know, it's wide open. But you, you know, it's just completely different golf. You, you know, you get way more. I feel like you get way more variety. And over also, here. I mean, if you go and and I think the European Tour again just showed it at the Ryder Cup. You know, the American style of play around the PGA National, which is a very similar golf course to what we play, you know, almost every week you in know, Paris. In Paris, Paris National. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, the Americans came over there thinking that they could overpower the golf course. Yeah. That just wasn't the case. You know, and, and, and essentially the European tour, or the European side nailed them. You yeah. Know? And that's the sort of style of play that we that we have to sort of play here. You know, we play under a lot of wind. You know, the, the ball's maybe not as, as hot as, say, in America. And a lot of the time you hit it off off offline in Europe, you're not going to find that puppy again. <laughs> There's no way. puppy. Yeah. <laughs> That's what? the record every time on the golf course. Oh, where's my puppy gone? <laughs> I've lost my puppy again. <laughs> do, you think, do you think though, like say, silly analogy, but like to win the Premier League, you've got to be consistent over 38 games. You might lose one or two, but you've got to be consistent, obviously. With like tour golfers now, with this whole distance thing, I imagine like if Bryson's off, I imagine it's seriously off with, like, so with that speed and that club yeah. head speed. Are these guys kind of almost happier now to go like win, miss cut, miss, win. Cut, miss cut? Well, can't, you know, yes. jokes aside, but is that more of a thing yeah. that people are happy to do? It's like, well, yeah. if I miss four cuts, but then win five a year, I'm going to win the money list or whatever. Definitely. Mm. I, I definitely think that that's the way that the game's headed. So like Bryce, I'd rather, go miss cut, miss cut, win, win. I'd rather win four times, miss five cuts, than yeah. finish 10th every week. Yeah. I don't know about you. No, the only thing I would say is that is, is Bryson going to do that consistently every single day until like even when during his good weeks mm. you know that's that's the question i ask is you know is he going to be able to constantly bomb it every week you know every day and even when he is in contention after three days of bombing it straight for the fourth day is he going to do it again I don't know. Like is he going to run out of energy? To to swing it, yeah. I'm, I'm fascinated. We bring up Bryson a lot on the podcast, but it, mm. I'm actually a bit of a it fan is of him. It is like I watch his yeah. YouTube videos now, and like he's literally hitting this shaft. It's like stripping in his t-shirt, mm. sweating. I mean, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, like, you know, I mean, you I gotta applaud. Yeah. You gotta applaud what he's done. I mean, you know, he's grinded his ass off. You know, to he's he's quite you know, it's to quite get the way he is because his swing is so up and down. He's he's quite lucky at the fact that he can go at it like that. Yeah, and he's a big boy because mm. because that Rory, when he swings it, it's like it's not even a swing. It's like poetry, like poetry, yeah. isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. It's like, just like a you, flowing motion. You, it's like the ocean moving. Yeah. It's just going. It's yeah. just <laughs> it's <like> just <laughs> natural. It? Yeah, yeah. Flu- fluidity. Yeah. yeah. Now, would you want to see him swinging it harder? I don't know. No. no. Now, what would it take then? Let's say we 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 get a crystal ball into the future, and in 2022, Bryson goes to win three majors, f- five or six PGA Tour events, and it's mm. almost proven to have worked distance. Yeah. Do you then chase it? Do do you, do you feel like you have to then do something about your current game to to potentially catch up? And this is obviously mm. all just presuming. If he predicting this may happen. If he. If he beats Tiger's record, then I'll think about it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a long way off. <laughs> I mean, that's my thought Tiger of it. Tiger was long, though. I think we forget when Tiger yeah. first came out. Yeah, he was, oh, yeah, he was long. silly long. He, he, he was long. He was. That is that is for sure. But I, I still think that Tiger didn't try and reinvent the game. That's true. I mean, he... He, he did reinvent the game. He, reinvent, to. <laughs> he reinvented yeah, the he game just by played playing the as game. close to perfect as you could. Yeah. Yeah, he just never shot himself yeah. out of the tournament, was always there, and when he was there, I mean, that's like I said earlier, you know, he would win. And again, that's what was so impressive about Tiger, was that he just did not miss a beat. You know, it was week in, week out, he was yeah. playing. I yeah. mean, yeah, I I, I, went, I saw a video on Instagram a few weeks ago when he was talking about his miss, his miscut streak, and he said that that to him was the one that meant the most because... You know, as as you and I know, you know, you get you get weeks where you know you're not quite getting the, the breaks, or you know, you get the wrong side of the draw, or yeah. you know, you just don't have it, or you just don't feel like being there. You know, and to make 143 cuts in a row, <laughs> that's yeah, because yeah, he, he can't have had his 
A, B, or maybe even C game. Not even C game. And he still did it. Yeah, and like I say, that's not... Sometimes, I'm sure you've both experienced where you won off the mark for making the, mm. making the, the yeah. cut. And you I might not have done that much wrong, but you got a bad no. bounce. You, you do nothing wrong. You, you, you lost the puppy up the side of 17. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. You do literally nothing wrong. You know, you have a few lip outs and, you know. But, you also, but also mind-wise as well, you know, you're not leading the golf tournament, so not everything is, you know, good. Mm. Whereas when you're on the cut mark, maybe something's a little bit dodgy. Maybe the three woods going a little bit right. It's a little hectic, you know. And and that's and that's the sort of mentality that you're in. You're on the cut mark. Things are there's a lot of uncertainty. Whereas when you're leading, you have one thing in your mind. You know, I want to mm. keep the lead, keep the lead, keep the lead. Whereas cut line is question on the cut then. So I know you could you could probably play um, you guys obviously know much better than I do. You might have some weeks where you play okay but miss the cut. It doesn't quite the ball doesn't drop all might have a bad bounce here and there. But realistically, I know this is a bit of a negative thought, but like if you miss a cut, okay, I missed a cut. How many missed cuts in rows it take? I don't know if you've had this experience where you think like shit, this is getting serious. Is it three? Is it four? Or does that not happen? Or is is there a point well, where I mean like, I'm I'm in the situation now where I've I think the only cut that I've made, I pulled the top ten. Mm-hmm. I don't know how yeah. I did that, but yeah, you, did. you know, I've I've really had a pretty tough tough time, uh, well, especially off the tee. But you know, you just you just got to keep rolling with it. I think you, I think like you, I think you just head down, you just grind it out. Just you know, no matter how bad it gets at the end of the day, the little white ball has no clue who's hitting it, mm-hmm. and you just got to yeah. head down, just grind it out. It's gonna suck. It's just you know, gonna happen, but you just gotta head down and just grind it out. And you feel like any week you could just win. Like you're good enough. You've pr- both proved you yeah. literally. Win. So like literally, you could next week win. Anything, yeah. anything can, anything and can happen. Crazier things have happened in the game of golf. Yeah, than, yeah. you know someone, up, you? someone yeah, winning a golf tournament. If you just you know, keep one, keep turning up and just as my caddy's good mate would say, just believe, brother. Just believe. <laughs> <laughs> just turn up and believe. I like that guy. I like do you that feel guy. Though, Without like even meeting him. Yeah. Like even though you've obviously had a bit of a rough time, as you mentioned, do you still feel that like actually like next week at the Alfred Dunhill, you've obviously got, we've seen today you've got the game. Like no, it you, could just happen. Four days, four days could change somebody's career. You know, That's you exciting. can, you can, you can literally go from the position that I'm at to winning the Dunhill and then playing DP World. Mm, you know, yeah. something it's that literally was crazy. Something that wasn't even on on the map. Now all of a sudden, it's I don't, I don't actually even it's need like to do two hundred and sixty shots it. away. You know, yeah, that's, literally two hundred and sixty shots mm. away. That's that's you know that's yeah, that's mad that isn't it? and I think that's what drives us so crazy about yeah. this game. I mean, we're all crazy, <laughs> crazy <laughs> bastards. I, I, I think all <laughs> players are. Crazy. Oh yeah, we're we're all we're all we're all crazy. Is it on, have, do you you'd openly admit that? Yeah. Right? When you yeah. hang around with yeah. what is it? I don't know. We're just you play so much golf. You just like, I think traveling. You chase a little like, white ball I trying to get in a tiny hole for that's your job. That's your job. You got to do that for your literally <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, the twenty-five times a year, twenty-five weeks a year. I sometimes have this weird thought. I mean, I'm not a good golfer, but like I wake up and think, imagine if I went to the range tomorrow and just couldn't hit the ball anymore. Like, do you ever have that feeling? Where imagine if you woke up tomorrow and just couldn't hit a golf ball? Like, okay, I could talk forever about about <laughs> golf, but David Hull had had something very similar about that. He was, I mean, he was flying. He was like top fifteen in the world mm, at the stage, was. and then. Wake up! Uh, woke up one one day on the third day. He was leading some, or well not leading, very close to the lead. He just forgot how to swing swing the golf club. Just said, uh, "I forgot how to hit it." What the way that I know how the to hit it. Hell, golf for the mental. But, but think about this, right? You two, obviously, amazing, amazing golfers. If you're at a seven iron now and you're like one eighty, one seven five from the green, and the chances are going to put it relatively close. Then when you put the club in the bag and you walk that golf ball, you've swung a piece of metal. Yeah, I know. That's hit a little ball. It's crazy. That far, Bro. that accurate. Like it, it blows my mind sometimes. This, this is what you blows think my mind. This is what blows my mind. You're making yourself move a piece of metal at like 125 miles an hour, making a ball go at like 185 miles an hour. <laughs> 
into like a 20 yard wide fairway with wind going every direction and sometimes it's raining and there's <laughs> water and trees and houses and and half on both sides half millimeter off it's gone oh it's gone. it's gone oh it's gone <laughs> it's horrible yeah it's funny where did it go i know it's so such the a only weird sport, sport of it you could say is similar. maybe like even snooker potentially but even yeah, then snooker it's like, is pretty but, close but then but then you've got the same you you could argue that there's no wind well that's true yeah you know the cough is the same. Golf is just. I think the other thing different. with golf, more more than any other sport, and I, and I still would argue to the dying day that golf is the hardest sport in the world. Yeah, yeah. I would. Even I would say though there's well. reports that say that it isn't, which baffles me. Mm. No one, no one's played a perfect round of golf. Nobody's ever shot eighteen. Nobody ever will. No, nobody can shoot eighteen. Done. Well, I think no. I think realistically, even, even fifty four. Realistically, you would argue that a perfect round of golf is eighteen birdies. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but no then one's it, done that. You would, but then equal, you guys get on par fives in two. So you've had to miss a putt. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's see, that's the, the, the only way so you can have perfect like will be a hole in one. It would just be good in regulation, but the ball goes in every time potentially. So it'd be like you get a two on a par four, one on a par three, three on a par. Look at Hayden's face. Two on a par five. Hayden's pondering. <laughs> you have to get eighteen until she couldn't, couldn't so, happen. Until somebody does that, it's. Um, but I think more no, than anything, like any of the other sports have. It's quite a linear te- um, technique. Yeah, mm. you have to do one thing pretty well. Like even football, to a degree, where golf, it's so many different components: mm. driving, I mean, could... irons, wedges, putting, chipping. Mo, the Mo, mental game as well is massive. Mo Norman says it quite well. He says putting and hitting are two completely different games. Massive. That are called golf. Yeah, you know, one's on the ground, one's in the air. You know, and that's. It's true. Mm. Really is. My head's like, I feel like, you know what you think about the universe? And you check yeah, out. Like, I know. Yeah, that's my I head's know. My head's just booming right now. We're, we're only spinning. talking about golf. <laughs> I know. Mad. So what, what's coming up next, right? You Next year, Sam, What I know you said you, you mm. more plan your personal goals. What are your goals for next year? Like, put, put, Do you have performance goals at all? No, I try. No, I never really have. So what do you want to get better at? Um, I don't know yet. Needs to I get better at twenty one against me. <laughs> I haven't. I haven't. Um, What's that cards? No. no chipping, chipping, game. chipping game. He keeps smoking me in this chipping game. He's chipping guard. I've seen that before. Yeah. Chipping game. How do you play it? So you get two balls each. Yeah. And then you chip two balls, obviously, to the hole, and whoever gets closest gets two points, and the second closest one point. So and you could get first, three. First, f- yeah. Yeah. So first and if you chip in, you get five. Yeah. And it's the first person to twenty one. Yeah, he beat me like twenty one. He beat me like twenty one twelve last week. Yeah, you got hurt. Right? Yeah, I got yeah. That's really good actually. Yeah. Um Although I did hit some naughty ones off off a down slope in the bunker. Which <laughs> yeah, you did. Gave me a lot of points. <laughs> um <laughs> so anyways, um I haven't looked at my stats f- even for this year yet, so I'll do that at the end of the year. Because you're almost you're in game mode, right? In game mode, just um you know, I sort of I know, so from this stretch of seven weeks tournaments, I know I'll go go home for a month, so I know what I feel like I need to work on from this stretch of events, um, and then you know, hopefully that'll lead me lead me good to the back end of the year, and then um, you know I'll have a sit down with my team um, and go from there and see see what we've come up with. You have Sean Foley as your coach. I do. How did that come about? Yeah, it's a pretty interesting story. So I've known Foles since I was 15-ish, 16. Um, my college coach, J.C. Deacon, and Foles are, are really close friends. Um, and then at the end of last year, I tore a disc in my back in Cyprus. Um, and I got some MRIs and stuff like that, and I had to be out for a while. And I wanted to make some changes in my swings to um, basically go around my injury to basically strengthen those those parts and not put as much pressure on those. And, um, you know, I called Foles and met with him, and, um, you know, he came we he came and looked at me, and, yeah, we, yeah, we've had a pretty good relationship uh, ever since. You know, we, he's always, we were always talking on the phone, and, um, you know, he's always checking up on me, and, um yeah, it's it's a pretty chill guy. He might have Tiger's number in his phone. He might. He might. 
He might do. He definitely does. <laughs> We're getting close to Tiger. Uh, 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 Basically, all this channel that Rick's set I know, up last uh, yeah, I know. close to Tiger Woods. He's, just, he's, he's just, using he's everybody. Sh- tried yeah. Minuli. That didn't work. Next, right, let's try time, Sam Horsfield. Next, like, next time we're having a lesson yeah. of Sean. Mm-hmm. And you record, you know Rick Shields is. You record your swing. Mm-hmm. Okay. And just go, oh, can I just have a quick look at can I just have a quick look at your phone? Yeah. Can, I, can I just have a look at that swing? Yeah. Oh, Sean, I think someone's after you over there. Yeah. You go to the T. You go to the T section of the contact. I, I, just think contact. Be on, I just think he'd be on the goat. Forward <laughs> contact. Yeah, the goat. Just forward it to myself. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> forward yeah. um, so uh, I'm, uh, it, it's quite interesting hearing that, obviously, much more about your actual own performance. I think that's really, mm. really... I feel like something that's new that's developed more recently with players. I don't know if, if you mm. found that as well. It feels like I've spoke to a few people who kind of want to control the controllables more than anything. Because there's so many stats available, I guess. You can yeah, actually really monitor true. it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's true. You know, I think this also goes back to the depth of the game of golf is ridiculous. You know, there's so many players each week that can win on any tour. Yeah. Um, you know, one of my one of my best friends from home, we were just talking about it, he plays so mini tour events, and we, he came and watched me two years ago at Wentworth, um, and he had just played a tournament last week, and I said, "What do you actually think, you know, the mini tour bros would you guys?" And he's like, "I have no doubt that for three days, or four days, when someone would get like fifteen under, yeah. um, you know." And I think that, you know, the level of golf is so deep, um, you know, it's it's so hard to win on any tour, um. You know, and I think a lot of that has to do with, you know, you look at people around my age or, you know, Justin Thomas's age, um, you know, that's sort of the Tiger era. Mm. And, you know, he sort of got us into golf and sort of made golf cool and, you know, made it popular for people to play. And, you know, I think, you know, to put, you know, to win in five, seven times a year, you know, that's putting a lot of pressure on yourself that I feel like, you know, you don't really need and, you know, you can you can only control playing good golf, and you know that's all you can do. When you were at your highest world ranking, mm. do you know what that was? No, seventy ninth. Okay, according to Wikipedia. Okay, I think I think you've already answered my question. I'm guessing at that point you didn't think I'm the seventy ninth best player in the world. No, I hundred percent would think that. Hundred percent. You know what's mad, right? So you're hundred and hundred nine. Think you are now in the world. Uh-huh. Well, so he only knew that because I told him this so morning. He didn't know. But essentially, yeah. there's a hundred. If we did it by the world rankings, there's a hundred and eight people on the planet better than mm-hmm. you in golf. If we're just going it literally, mm-hmm. like you can walk. Hey, Hayden's like, yeah, but I beat him back nine. Times. Yeah, and he bombed it past him. Charred him. <laughs> <laughs> but he like, got hurt. You, can, you can walk in. This is what I think is mad, right? You can walk in to any golf shop, any golf course, pretty much in the world, and there's no any driving range you can just walk on and there's not a soul better than you. That's mad. I know. Yeah. It is pretty crazy to think. But then he walks on the driving range at the open mm-hmm. and 107 players are better than him. Yeah. Well, statistically better. Well, than yeah, yeah, statistically. But you know it's what true. I like about that is that if you were the 108th best footballer in the world... You would be mobbed with people. Oh, massively. You oh, would, yeah. You would be mobbed. Whereas you can still be the 100th best player golfer in the world. And no one has a clue who I am. Well, yeah. Not like? a damn clue. Like, like, it doesn't sound cool. Yeah. But I think it would be quite cool if you got to that stage. Well, you this know is what I'm slightly saying? embarrassing. Uh uh-uh. For you. Okay. And you. Okay. Um, on this table, we got stopped on the golf course a few times today. Yeah. On the before guy turned up. Uh-huh. I think I got maybe asked for the most pictures. Yeah. Then guy. Then I know. nobody. You see? You see? Too. You see, we're just bad, bad, I tell you what, then I'll swap that picture that guy took for a quarter of your bank balance. <laughs> but, also, but also, Sam's got a, a Lamborghini Urus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's um, what I'm saying. It's. it's uh, so that's why it's unique thing. though because like you said you you could you could break in even i mean i can't imagine matt, Fitz, matt fitzpatrick gets recognized much in england no if no. he went to the traffic center for a but burger even, i bet not a single person would stop even, him no. but even if you you if you took it further than that really if you if you took even and i i, I might not i might not be right but if you say took dustin johnson and you just put him in normal clothes and you just told him to walk 
I think you'd be surprised Bruh, how I many think, people would I walk think, past him. Oh, no. Oh, so many people. Any The only people who would know who he was would someone is someone who pays attention to golf. Yeah. yeah. But uh, if you if you took LeBron James oh, would, oh, and you put him in normal clothes, yeah. people would not get off of him. I'll tell you what, oh. I've got I've got a couple of players. Not Maybe not Dustin Johnson because I think people would, but someone like a Patrick Cantley. Yeah. yeah. It, who has been voted the number one best player on the PGA Tour this year. Yeah. I honestly believe you could put him in any shopping mall yeah. and he would not get... Just give him a shirt and some slops and no one will know who he is. Yeah, he'd be fine. Would you then, last question, would you rather be... I'm trying. To, there's a really good question somebody asked. Is it something like, would you have li- rather lived your life like Tiger Woods mm-hmm. or Matt Kuchar? I think you would l- rather live your life like Matt Kuchar. 100%. 100%. Really? I think Tiger Woods' actual life from start to finish been not well, as glamorous as people think. Well, um, like the way he grew up with his dad and oh stuff, no, it, yeah. it was tough. Yeah, I think, but I also think... Yeah, he's Tiger Woods. <laughs> I don't know. But even, but I think, um, Bill, uh, is it Billy? The guy who caddies for Matthew Fitzpatrick? Billy yeah, Foster. Billy. Billy Foster, yeah. yes. Uh, he, he even, I think he wanted to go to dinner with Tiger and Tiger even said, you don't want to do that because you're just not going to ever like ever enjoy it enjoy your meal it's like people just Rick. come up to you never we go out I can't enjoy anything that is true <laughs> stop all the time that is true <laughs> I saw all the pictures he was taking today yeah well honestly that was class I didn't I didn't know where that was going to go and it, I feel like we've been here there and everywhere yeah we have I think it was different because initially we just thought it was going to be um, the three of us as and in me, me, you and Sam. Me, you and Sam, sorry, yeah. And it was probably going to be like, how did you start playing golf? Which is really exciting, but it's kind of often it is quite like my dad played or whatever. And mm. the fact that we had the four of us and Hayden joined, I think we got so much more random stuff. Yeah, l- and we were just chatting. Yeah. Just spiced the, it up with the, the kind of, South African. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the background of being a tall player, the highs, the lows, like what it's actually like. And then off camera, we both single. Yeah, oh, buddy, yeah. sliding the DMs. No, not. Oh, I was going to dive into like, what's it like being a bloody single lad out on tour? That being Sam's, in a long-term relationship. That Sam's life. It's fun. It? It's good. COVID hasn't made it fun, but it's. Have you complete? Have you completed Tinder? <laughs> or do you not need to? No. If you've got a Lamborghini Urus <laughs> and two European tour wins. Well, look at his face. He's like. <laughs> no, I have not <laughs> completed Tinder, but. Yet. 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 Nice. <laughs> so if there's anybody listening. If there's anybody, sign the DMs. <laughs> that that message is for you, Mark. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, right. Awesome. Thanks, gents. Um, oh, by the way, not actually right now, but when this comes out, it'll be my birthday today. Oh, happy birthday, pal. Happy As birthday. When this comes out, thank you. It's on oh. Tuesday. Oh, very so nice. So sign to my DMs and wish me happy birthday. There you go. There you go. Uh, thanks for listening. We've got one more episode for the 99th and then boom, 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 live show, 100th. I'm excited. By the way, the worst thing about having four people is just horrendously tall Mike. Yeah. I've been messing with all day. If you want to see, if you want to watch the video, check see out guys. guys, big one. Yeah, good one. Get, into, get involved. Right, Sam, Hayden, good luck with the rest of the season. Good luck with your careers. Thanks I'm sure you'll Thank you. Thank and uh, you. we've got quite a good lucky charm. So I, I honestly believe if everyone's listening, they should bet on you for your next tournaments. Hopefully it doesn't backfire. Good night. All right, guys. Cheers, guys. Cheers, boys. Thanks. Cheers. 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 Cheers.